Today's a good day for a few reasons. Uh, the first of which is Kyrie's home. I know I mentioned this in a recent video, but Kyrie works nights as a hospitalist, so a nocturnist, if you will. She works seven days on, seven days off for 12 hours overnight. During the day, we figured that since she's gonna be a half an hour, 45 minute drive north of where we live, that she should have an apartment up there just to kind of sleep there. Turns out she really missed just being home, hanging out with the dogs for like 10 minutes before she goes to bed and that she's wired for the first hour or two after she gets off her shift anyway. So now that we don't have anybody like working in the house today, she can just kind of come home and I just have to be kind of quiet, which is why I'm using these microphones as opposed to the ones that usually lives on top of my camera. Because um, if I'm gonna vlog, <laughs> you should probably hear me and I don't wanna shout because she's sleeping over there. So you guys are really gonna get to see me hobble around today. The second good part about today is that physical therapy starts today and uh, I have to leave in like 10 minutes, but I also have to feed the dog. So <laughs> maybe I can do two things at once and like actually do stuff and talk at the same time. Bruin, Bruin, come on. Hey, psst, Bruin, let's go, get up. Bru, snacks, here. Hey, could you get up please? Thank you. Bru, over here. Bru, over here. Over here, Bru, over there. There you go. Bruin, come on. Since the big dogs got in a fight about a year and a half ago, um, Kyrie has been very worried about them, their eating situation and like eating too close to the, you know, together or whatever. But honestly, over the last month, you would have no idea they ever got in a fight. Yes, I'm working on you guys next. Okay, 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 all right. I know it seems very dark in here um, because it is, because it's raining and gross. Three of our dogs kind of eat in more or less the same place, but Millie eats in her little, what I call jail. Are you in jail? Do you enjoy jail? Yes. I've mentioned before that Millie's a rescue and she is very food aggressive. So we try to keep her kind of separate from everybody when it comes to food because she gets like really angry about it. You are a big guy? Not long after we moved here, we decided that this cupboard on the kitchen island was going to be like where we put all the, like, the dog treats and a bunch, a bunch of dog stuff. And she realized that quickly and she would sit there and just guard it. And anytime anybody came near it, she would growl and snarl and that's not okay with us. So we put an end to that pretty quickly. And then she sometimes does the same thing as the dog's food is also in the laundry room that's back there. She'll just like sit there and the dog wants to come either near it or past it. She will just growl and yap at him. Um, but we're working on that and it's getting, it's getting, it's gotten a lot better. She no longer really guards that area. She'll sit by the door because she wants to tell me that, Hey, you forgot to feed me today, even though I didn't. And she's just like that. And so I don't know if this happens to other dogs, but it's happened to, with every dog that like I've ever had. They will finish most of their meal. This is the, the two wolfhounds. They'll finish most of their meal and then they'll kind of just like trade bowls. Like it's the same food, but they just trade bowls. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's like a dog thing, but because Kiri is more worried about them getting like aggressive with one another than I am, we're trying to have that not happen so that they just, you know, Bruin gets the black bowl, Bruin gets the blue bowl, and that's just what happens. Like if Bruin doesn't finish his meal and he goes, has a glass of, a glass of water, <laughs> goes have a drink of water, and then he lays down, then I can figure he's, you know, he's probably done. I might just pour the rest of it in Bernie's bowl as opposed to have Bernie just eat out of his bowl. I don't know if you can hear the thunder over the you know, dogs drinking, but there's thunder and I have no idea where an umbrella is. So I think I'm just gonna get soaked. All right, dogs get to pee, I get to go to therapy. Bruin seems to be out of breath since I've been home. But I think I figured out why I really believe that I'm gonna come out of this like way better. And it's like every it's like every dog on the planet. Wherever I am, they they have to be here. But I think Bergy is just too lazy. He's still out there. All right, back to what I was saying. I think I know why I'm going to do really well with PT. Is that most people dread PT, but I was actually like excited going to get this show on the road. But even more so, I came out of it being like excited. 
I understand that I have to be very careful with this. It's a surgical procedure. My anatomy is not the anatomy that I was born with anymore. <laughs> so I have to make sure this doesn't get worse before it gets better. But that being said, it felt just so good to be like actively progressing towards a goal as opposed to just like sitting there and icing it and waiting for it to like heal. So I'm two weeks out of surgery. The PT said that at two, probably three weeks, we want to ideally get to 60 degrees of passive flexion. So essentially I'm on my stomach. PT has his hands like on my hamstring to make sure it's relaxed. And then he has his other hand on my ankle and he just bends my knee up to 60 degrees, give or take. What he'll do is bend it to the point where I'm feeling some pressure, but not pain. And then he'll stop there. We'll wait there then kind of do back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We got up to 64 degrees today at two weeks and a day out of surgery. So I'm really happy about that. I think that's a testament to just being in good shape before I was going to surgery. Some people might be like, oh, you're so lucky. You know, mine wasn't that, that good. I mean, I guess kind of, you can think of it that way, but I've spent 10 years, 11 years trying to be the healthiest and strongest version of myself. So it's like, is it lucky or was it just that was going to happen as a result of the work I've already done? Whatever you think, I don't care. What's more exciting for me now is that I can actually start actively doing things to help my leg kind of like progress better. I've got homework to do with regards to like the exercises that I do every day, exercises that I do some days. Um, I, <laughs> I'm worried that I'm just gonna like only ever do these exercises all day for like <laughs> 12 hours a day. Uh, I, I'll probably get tired at some point and actually have to like do things to make money. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm very excited to like get this show on the road. Cause like you can see that there's a stark difference between the musculature on my left side and the musculature that no longer exists on my right side. There's gonna be atrophy of my right quad. There's just, it's just gonna happen. It makes me sad, but it's gonna happen. I think the atrophy time has just kind of started because I'm pretty sure it takes like two or three weeks for the atrophy process to like kind of get going after your body realizes that, okay, you're not using this as nearly as much as you were or at all. I'm confident there's gonna be some atrophy. I'm hopeful that it's not nearly as much as I, you know, as there could be, because that would just look ridiculous. Even now I look ridiculous, but there's still a, you know, big scar on my knee and then my knee is still swollen. There's a bunch of, you know, tissue in there that needs to be remodeled. And, you know, what are we gonna do to, make that happen the best way we can. I was laughing in the car ride home because my PT was talking about like promoting kind of growth factors so that you know you, you heal and you recover and you repair just as strong as you possibly can. And talking about all the things that would promote more of those growth factors, things like getting enough sleep, having a proper diet, making sure you're, you know, you're, you're training uh, as, as intensely as you can. Um, and I just started chuckling. I wanna have bigger muscles. So I kind of do all that stuff anyway. So like the protocols for that sort of thing is not any different than my normal lifestyle. So that's not gonna be a huge change. Oh, Bergie came. Hi bud, can I help you? He can't fit. Bruins in the way. Oh, hot Berg. <laughs> what? Yes, hello, hello. I know, I know, I get it, I know. Do you, do, you need, do you need to go pee or do you just miss me? Okay. He's on all fours by the way, in case you guys didn't know. Um, he is our tallest dog at uh, 36 and a half inches of the shoulders. Um, my, my desk is at how many inches high? 34 and a half inches high. He, his shoulders are taller than me than the desk. My camera's on a tripod that's not terribly tall. Um, but I'm, you know, in a, I guess it's kind of a short desk chair sitting up straight and he's, you know, up here. I'll burg you back. Okay, you probably just have to pee. Let's, let's have you pee outside so you don't make a, a puddle in my house. But I, we don't want them making a ton of noise just in general because Kiri is a tremendously light sleeper. In the house, she'll hear them, which is mostly Millie yapping. But if we let them out outside, that's where we want them to play. But again, yapping, light sleeper, bedrooms over there. She can hear everything. So it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a delicate situation for the rest of the day. But the other problem with that is it's raining outside. <laughs> I think it's gonna be raining all day. I'm not sure how I'm gonna figure this out because Millie really wants to play and she really wants to yap and scream and I don't want her to do that. I got an email request, or I got a DM request to be like interviewed for um, a health magazine, I think, talking about, you know, new moms and fatigue and all the medical things that can go into it. 
and there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of really good questions, but I spent so far, and I'm not done. I need to like review it and edit it and all that good stuff. But I spent about an hour and a half going through the questions. There's not a lot of questions, but as you can tell, I ramble. And I'm gonna have like Kiri read through it, and she's just gonna yell at me for rambling. <laughs> when Martian wants to play, she'll like go up to one of the big dogs and just start like punching them in the face. And uh, she did that to Bergy, and he was like, "No, thank you." <laughs> oh man, as I stand here, I realize that it's already time for another haircut. I just had it cut like less than a month ago, I think, but I went to a guy who, no, 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 nice guy, talented guy, haircut was great, but it was not like short enough on the sides to where I could like not go back because it's like I'm pushing it in and it's like, trying to poof out and explode and I don't want that to happen anymore. So I think it's about time for me to get another haircut. I got super spoiled when I was in like Chicago. The same guy cut my hair for like seven years. When I moved to Nashville, the first guy I found to cut my hair, loved him. Same guy, two years. Now it's gonna be like, I don't know, my third haircut since moving down to Florida. And I'm over two so far. It's okay though. Gotta figure it out. One of the most powerful things you can do to kind of get those growth factors going is, uh, is lift weights. And unfortunately, I can't lift nearly as heavy as I did a couple weeks ago because with everything, you know, you need your legs. And of course, I'd much rather take a few steps back now as opposed to push through everything super hard and, you know, never really recover. So now that I have PT exercises to do, I can superset that in, in the middle of all my exercises. So today is just everything is sets of 15. I know it's really the right side that we're worried about most, but if I can do the left side as well, I might as well. I've always been kind of imbalanced and asymmetrical. So if I'm gonna do one side, I might as well do both of them. Because, yeah, I'm not gonna spend my entire day trying to fix, I don't know, my left bicep because it's a little bit smaller than my right. That'll happen. So if I'm working on stuff to strengthen one of my glutes, can I help you? You're kind of in the way. Then I might as well take the time to also do the other one, assuming I can use this leg for balance and, you know, hold on to the tool chest for balance also. But if I can do both of them, I might as well do both of them. Sure, it takes a little while longer, but I think it's worth it. Oh. For the sake of completeness and transparency, I have 135 pounds on the, dumb, on the barbell, and these are 25 pound dumbbells. By no stretch of the imagination, this is the heaviest that I think I can lift, but being able to control the reps, especially on the eccentric, being able to get good quality reps in every time, and to be able to get some cardiovascular activity going too. As far as I'm concerned, probably pretty good for you. I wasn't counting these, crap. I got two things left to do. And I've got a dog there, a dog there, a dog there, and a dog right over there. So I have friends. But <laughs> the second to last exercise that I'll do is my least favorite. It's called quad sets. And essentially all I have to do is flex my quadriceps. Sounds simple enough. I can do that really well on this side, but this side I have to hold it for 10 seconds and I can't figure out how to do it really. It's like I really have to uh, pay attention. My PT talked about something called arthrogenic muscle inhibition. Essentially, all the crap that's going on in this knee right here is inhibiting this muscle from wanting to contract. And I don't know how it works. I didn't go to PT school. That's why I'm going to see a physical therapist. But I have to do that 10 times. And it's very annoying because I have, you know, strong muscles and it, I get to look at it just not be the same as it was, you know, three weeks ago. Makes me sad, but you know, one thing at a time. The last thing I do is with the help of this leash rope thing, essentially I just uh, wrap it around my foot. I put, it, I put it next to my heel and all I do is pull back on it so I can passively bend my knee. So I pull back, my knee goes up. I feel some pressure here. I'm gonna hold it for just a sec. Okay, maybe a few more seconds than one second. Just kind of let it sit there for a while. 
get used to the, the stretch and the pull. And then we let it slowly come back down. So that's not a whole lot of, <laughs> not a whole lot of flexion going on. But this is just like my at home exercise homework stuff to kind of keep everything moving forward because my knee is really locked in extension for, you know, 23 and a half hours a day at least. But these are definitely my least favorite, but I know I'm going to get the most benefit out of them because that's retraining this area of my body to like do what it's supposed to do. And the more we can do that, the more we can recover. What's nice is I can start to feel some of my old muscle kind of hang over the side of my IT band over here. So that's nice. <laughs> like there's muscle in there. I just can't use it yet. All right, I think that's a little bit more the second time. I don't want to push it to a place where I'm feeling pain because that's like not good. But what I do want to do is kind of make sure I'm, you know, pushing myself a little bit. The way I describe it is that I want to be like a little bit mentally uneasy about the progression. And that always comes before the pain because my brain is going to tell me, hey, don't do that. So once I become a little bit mentally uneasy, I'll hang there and we get used to it and maybe get comfortable. And then we bring it back down and we rest for a couple more seconds. So yeah, I'm not in any pain. It's just, I feel like there's pressure kind of it's hard to tell exactly where, but it's kind of like all, all around here on the inside. And I'm just kind of sitting here chilling. I don't think it's related to the incision. This is not over the incision, it's like over here. I think it's related to how much inflammation and goo and other crap is still on my knee that I need to, you know, help remodel. So I wanted to show you something that's even more pathetic than me not being able to use my right leg. <laughs> um, it's my most excited Prime Day purchase. Uh, for those of you who Maybe watching this later, Prime Day was just a couple days ago. And Amazon was having a lot of big sales. And <laughs> since I started actually like doing the vlogging stuff more and I've been put out, putting out a lot more content recently, over the last month or two, um, my poor hard drive is <laughs> suffering. So I, um, I bought this little bad boy. It's a four terabyte external hard drive. And that's a lot of terabytes but uh, it's not very big. I used to have one that was bigger than my hand. That was 256 megabytes. Um, the little SD card that's currently in my camera is 512 megabytes, like double the size. This is one of the ones that's like crush resistant <laughs> and like waterproof and everything. So when I like travel, I can kind of have it on me so I don't have to like continue to fill up my computer. And now I get to spend the next hour or so um, organizing all of my files and video files and uh, audio files so that I can have them all in one place and I don't have to just either go on the videos thing on my desktop or the downloads folder to find all the downloaded stuff. So hopefully after some really thoughtful organization um, and some really thoughtful organizing I can have some semblance of organization because I, I don't have that yet. And I'm still trying to figure out how to do all the raw like videos and name them something other than like the, whatever the camera names them. Because I don't want to name them like the title of the video because it's, I guess I could do the title of the video in like raw or something. Hmm, yeah. Curious still sleeping. It's uh, it's like 1.30 and the dogs have been a pain in the balls today. Uh, Millie's just been barking a lot. And it's really frustrating for me because I can't like stop it, right? Um, and that's gonna wake up Kyrie, which is not ideal for me. Actually, it doesn't really impact me that much other than she doesn't get to sleep. So I guess it sucks a lot more for her. I don't know, I just feel guilty. I don't wanna feel guilty about it, so. All right, let's organize some crap, which is the most boring thing that I've ever said in my life. Oh boy, okay, fine. Huh? Close. Are you home for how many days? Like four. four. Alright, have a good day. I'll be here until I pass out. Are you going to come in? I'll be here for you until I pass out. Oh, okay. Which is normal. Yeah. Love you. Bye. You can get up their bowls too. Yeah. And just like that, back home alone. That's kind of the way it goes when she like works. When she's not working, it's you know a normal ish life. I don't have to tiptoe around all day 
and make it so that the dogs, you know, don't scream all the time. Seems like she sleeps a lot better here, or at least she says she sleeps a lot better here than she does at her current apartment, which I guess makes my efforts feel better in that I'm not making enough noise to wake her up, and I'm keeping the dogs, I guess, more or less quiet enough so that they don't wake her up, even though I think that's not gonna happen, but I know she's a light sleeper, and I wanna make sure it's as quiet as humanly possible, so getting four dogs to be quiet all the time is almost impossible. It's definitely sad watching her kind of like dip like, oh, there's a car. Yeah. Definitely sad seeing her just like kind of leave all the time. But it's a lot nicer knowing that she's like home and being able to see her every day as opposed to how it started when I wouldn't see her for a week. And if she's happy being home and driving the extra, I don't know, probably extra half an hour each way, then it's probably worth it. So during these weeks, we don't really have meals together like we did, you know, in previous videos and normal weeks, but. I guess it comes with the territory. Even before this last, like, I don't know, month and a half of like constantly producing a ton of content, we would still like after dinner do kind of not the same thing together, like parallel play really. She really likes her reality television shows and I don't care for them that much. So typically she'd be watching reality TV and I would be doing something else, whatever that might happen to be. These days it's, but now how it works is she'll go to work and I will continue to do whatever else I had been doing beforehand, whether it's trying to grow this YouTube channel, trying to become a better vlogger, trying to become a better content creator, trying to become more knowledgeable or answer someone's specific questions that I think a lot of people have those questions and whatever it might happen to be, that's kind of what I do instead now. And reality television doesn't have much to do with it. But I'm happy Kyrie like wants to be part of this more because it's kind of something that sometimes we can do together especially when she's like during her weeks off but i gotta go eat something i'm hungry that was a typical day pretty much yeah all of the days are kind of like that so thanks for watching i will uh catch you in the next one